Stories of John Chapman, better known as Johnny Appleseed, narrated by Taylor Seth Hall. Old Johnny Appleseed by Elizabeth Harrison Many years ago on the sparsely settled prairies of America, there lived an old man who was known by the queer name of Johnny Appleseed. His wife had died long ago, and his children had grown up and scattered to the corners of the earth. He had not even a home that he could call his own, but wandered from place to place with only a few friends and little or no money. His face was wrinkled, his hair was thin and gray, and his shoulders stooped. His clothes were old and ragged, and his hat was old and shabby. Yet, Inside of him was a heart that was brave and true, and he felt that even he, old and poor as he was, could be of use in the world, because he loved his fellow men, and love always finds something to do. As he trudged along the lonely road from town to town, or made for himself a path through the unbroken forest, he often thought of the good God, and of how all men were children of the one Father, Sometimes he would burst out singing the words of a song which he had learned when he was a young man. Millions loving, I embrace you. All the world, this kiss I send. Brothers, o'er yon starry tent dwells a God whose love is true. These words, by the way, are part of a great poem you may someday read, and they once so stirred the heart of a great musician that he set them to the finest music the world has ever heard. And now the great thought of a loving God and the great music of a loving man comforted the lonely traveler. The old man wandered about from village to village, which in those days were scattered far apart, with miles and miles of prairie land stretching between them, and sometimes woodland and rivers, too, separated one village from the next. At night he usually earned his crust of bread and lodgings by mending the tea kettle or wash boiler of some farmer's wife, or by soldering on the handle of her tin cup or the knob to her teapot, as he always carried in one of his coat pockets a small charcoal stove and a bit of solder. He always carried under his arm or over his shoulder a green baize bag, and when the mending was done he would oftentimes draw out of this green bag an old violin and begin to play. And the farmer, as well as his wife and the children, would gather around him and listen to his strange music. Sometimes it was happy, and sometimes it was sad, but always sweet. Sometimes he sang words that he himself had written, and sometimes the words which had been written by the great masters. But mending broken tinware and playing an old violin were not the only things he did to help the world along. As he wandered from place to place, he often noticed how rich the soil was, and would say to himself, some day this will be a great country with thousands of people living on this land, and though I shall never see them, they may never read my verses or hear my name, still I can help them and add some things to their lives. So, whenever a farmer's wife gave him an apple to eat, he carefully saved every seed that lay hidden in the heart of the apple, and next day as he trudged along he would stoop down every now and then and plant a few of the seeds, and then carefully cover them up with the rich black soil of the prairie. Then he would look up reverently to the sky and say, I can but plant the seed, dear Lord and thy clouds may water them, but thou alone can give the increase. Thou only can cause this tiny seed to grow into a tree, whose fruit shall feed my fellow men. Then the godlike love that would fill his heart at such a thought would cause his face to look young again, and his eyes to shine as an angel's eyes must shine, 
and oftentimes he would sing in clear, rich tones, Millions loving, I embrace you, all the world this kiss I send, brothers o'er yon starry tent dwells a God whose love is true. And he knew that God dwelt in his heart as well as in the blue sky above. When the cold winters came and the ground was frozen too hard for him to plant his apple seeds, he still saved them, and would often have a small bag full of them by the time that spring returned again, and this is how he came to be called Old Johnny Appleseed. Though nobody took very much notice of what he was doing, he still continued each day to plant apple seeds, and each evening to play on his violin. By and by his step grew slower and his shoulders drooped lower, until at last his soul, which had always been strong and beautiful, passed out of his worn old body into the life beyond, and the cast-off body was buried by some villagers who felt kindly towards the old man, but who never dreamed he had ever done any real service for them or their children, and soon his very name was forgotten. But... The tiny apple seeds took root and began to grow, and each summer the young saplings grew taller and each winter they grew stronger, until at last they were young trees, and then they were old enough to bear apples. As people moved from the east out to the wild western prairies, they naturally enough selected sites for building their homes near the fruitful apple trees, and in the springtime the young men gathered the blossoms for the young maidens to wear in their hair, and in the autumn the fathers gathered the ripe red and yellow apples to store away in their cellars for winter use, and the mothers made apple sauce and apple pies and apple dumplings of them, and all the year round the little children played under the shade of the apple trees, but none of them ever once thought of the old man who had planted for people he did not know, and who could never even thank him for his loving services. Each apple that ripened bore in its heart a number of new seeds, some of which were planted, and grew into fine orchards from which were gathered many barrels of apples. These were shipped farther west, until the rocky mountains were reached, in the center of each apple shipped were more seeds, from which grew more apple trees, which bore the same kind of apples that the wrinkled old man in the shabby old clothes had planted long years before. So that many thousands of people have already been benefited by what the poor old man in the shabby old coat did, and thousands yet to come will enjoy the fruits of his labor. It is true he never wore the armor of a great knight, and he never held the title of a great general. He never discovered a new world, nor helped his favorite to sit on the throne of a king. But perhaps, after all, though ragged and poor, he was a hero, because in his heart he really and truly sang as well as with his lips. Millions loving, I embrace you, all the world this kiss I send, brothers, o'er yon starry tent dwells a God whose love is true. For the greatest of all victories is to learn to love others even when they do not know it. This is to be godlike, and to be godlike is to be the greatest of heroes. Appleseed John by Lydia Maria Child Poor Johnny was bended, well nigh double, with years of toil and care and trouble, but his large old heart still felt the need of doing for others some kindly deed. But what can I do, old Johnny said, I who work so hard for daily bread, it takes heaps of money to do much good, I am far too poor to do as I would. 
The old man sat thinking deeply a while, when over his features gleamed a smile, and he clapped his hands with a boyish glee, and said to himself, There's a way for me. He worked and he worked with might and main, but no one knew the plan in his brain. He took ripe apples in pay for chores, and carefully cut from them all of the cores. He filled a bag full, then wandered away, and no man saw him for many a day. With knapsack over his shoulder slung, he marched along and whistled or sung. He seemed to roam with no object in view, like one who had nothing on earth to do. But journeying thus o'er the prairies wide, he paused now and then and his bag untied. With pointed cane deep holes he bore, and in every hole he placed a core then covered them well, and left them there, in keeping of sunshine, rain, and air. Sometimes for days he waded through grass, and saw not a living creature pass, but often when sinking to sleep in the dark, he heard the owls hoot, and the prairie dogs bark. Sometimes a native of sturdy limb came striding along and walked with him, as he who had food shared with the other, as if he had met a hungry brother. When the native saw how the bag was filled, and looked at the holes that the white man drilled, he thought to himself, "'Twas a silly plan to be planting seed for some future man." Sometimes a log cabin came in view, where Johnny was sure to find jobs to do, by which he gained stores of bread and meat, and welcome rest for his weary feet. He had full many a story to tell, and goodly hymns that he sung right well. He tossed up the babes and joined the boys in many a game full of fun and noise, and he seemed so hearty in work or play Men, women, and boys all urged him to stay, but he always said, I have something to do, and I must go on to carry it through. The boys, who were sure to follow him round, soon found what it was he put in the ground, and so as time passed and he travelled on, every one called him Old Appleseed John. Whenever he'd used the whole of his store, he went into cities and worked for more. Then he marched back to the wilds again and planted seeds on hillside and plain. In cities some said that the old man was crazy, while others said he was only lazy. But he took no notice of jibes and jeers. He knew he was working for future years. He knew that trees would soon abound, where once a tree could not have been found, that a flickering play of light and shade would dance and glimmer along the glade, that blossoming sprays would form fair bowers and sprinkle the grass with rosy showers, and the little seeds his hands had spread would become ripe apples when he was dead. So he kept on travelling far and wide, till his old limbs failed him, and he died. He said at the last, "'Tis a comfort to feel I've done some good in the world, though not a great deal." Weary travellers journeying west in the shade of his trees find pleasant rest, and they often start with glad surprise at the rosy fruit that round them lies. And if they inquire whence came such trees, where not a bough once swayed in the breeze, the answer still comes as they travel on. These seeds were planted by Appleseed John. Next week on the Storytime Classics podcast, Santa Claus and Little Billy, a heartwarming story of a young boy who mistakes a poor, struggling father for Santa Claus himself. Remember that all episodes now have companion ebooks available for free download in PDF and EPUB formats. You can find them on the Storytime Classics official webpage. The link is in the description. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. If you are enjoying these stories, please share these recordings with your friends and consider donating to help keep this podcast alive. A link to support us is also in the description. This is Taylor Seth Hall, and I'll see you next week on the Storytime Classics podcast.